Today we will discuss one of the Earth's kings, the tyrants whom history has immortalized as one of the strongest despots throughout history. He was the first to claim divinity on Earth and the first to place a crown on his head. It was said he was the first to rule the Earth from its east to its west with iron and fire. He is Nimrod, son of Canaan, one of the most defiant on Earth, causing corruption. Thus, God Almighty destroyed him with the weakest creature on Earth. So, who is this Nimrod? What is his story? What did he do until God Almighty destroyed him? And how? And who is the prophet that God Almighty sent to him? This is what we will learn in today's episode. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and activate the bell to receive all the new updates. Let's begin. First, who is Nimrod? Nimrod is the son of Canaan, son of Cush, son of Shem, son of Noah. Peace be upon him. It was said he was a king of the four kings of the earth. He ruled the entire earth from its east to its west, among four individuals. Nimrod grew up in the land of Babylon, Iraq now, during the time of the prophet Abraham. Peace be upon him. Thus Nimrod was one of the greatest oppressors among the ancient kings of the earth. God Almighty gave him almost everything, so his era was known for prosperity and flourishing. He was a great king and a formidable army leader feared by all the armies of his time. Nimrod could not accept the idea that there was another king besides him on earth. The whole earth was under his grip. He ruled the earth for about 400 years with power and severe tyranny. The people of Babylon were idolaters, worshipping planets, idols, and the sun. Nimrod made an idol in his image and form, then ordered them to worship it. The people obeyed and worshipped him, which made him more arrogant. He said to his people, I am the God of the earth, and your God, and I am your Lord, so worship me. His corrupt people also obeyed and worshipped him besides God. Nimrod continued to rule the world from his kingdom in Babylon. He was the first to place a crown on his head and built one of the seven wonders of the world, the great Tower of Babylon. Nimrod was also the first to learn magic on earth personally from Satan, where it was said that at the beginning of his life he lived in his father's kingdom with all its luxury, wealth, riches and prosperity. He often dreamed of becoming the ruler of the earth and could not accept anyone else ruling the earth besides him. However, one day, Nimrod went to bathe, surrounded by a group of women, when a hunchbacked man, wearing black clothes, entered. Nimrod was surprised by his appearance and clothes and wondered how this man entered the palace and even the bath. The hunchbacked man mockingly said to Nimrod, mocking him, Are you the one who will rule the earth and its contents and women wash your hands? Nimrod became furious and ordered his immediate execution. After his soldiers killed him, Nimrod ordered the execution of all the slave women around him because of the words they heard from this hunchbacked man. But strangely, when Nimrod went up to his room, he found the same hunchbacked man sitting on his bed. Nimrod was surprised and said to him, I ordered your execution a while ago, woe to you, who are you? The story says the hunchbacked man told him, I am the Prince of Light. Created on the day light was created. If you want to rule the earth and its contents, you must see me in my true form. The hunchback then appeared in his real form. He was huge in stature, his body covered with hair. It was said this hunchbacked man was Satan. As soon as Satan appeared in his form, he ordered Nimrod to prostrate to him in exchange for giving him the power to rule the earth and its people. This meeting was the first between Nimrod and Satan the first covenant in which a human agreed to sell his soul to a jinn on earth in exchange for authority and influence. Nimrod prostrated to Satan, who then taught Nimrod magic and how to rule the earth. After Nimrod learned magic, Satan ordered him to kill his father to increase his power and make people fear him more, facilitating his rule over the country and allowing him to expand his rule further. Indeed, Nimrod got rid of his father, Cush, who had provided him with all kinds of luxury, wealth, and riches, to become after that a tyrannical, oppressive king and a giant sorcerer. He ordered the people of his kingdom to submit to him as a god. Nimrod made a great golden crown, greater than any other crown. Nimrod was the first to place a crown on his head, and the idea of the crown was inspired by the kings of the jinn. He said, when he placed this golden crown on his head, We are the kings of the world the owners of what is in it, meaning himself and Satan. Nimrod's kingdom continued to invade kingdoms until Nimrod became the king of the seven regions. However, one day, 
Nimrod saw a strange dream that terrified him and took sleep from his eyes. He saw a star suddenly appear in the sky, and its light obscured the sun's light and completely erased it. Nimrod woke up from his sleep terrified by what he saw, then asked priests, astrologers, and soothsayers to interpret this dream for him. They interpreted, saying that this year a boy would be born who would be the cause of your kingdom's destruction by his hands. Nimrod immediately ordered the slaughter of every boy born that year, and God Almighty willed that Abraham, peace be upon him, was born that year. But his mother hid him from the eyes, fearing him from Nimrod's tyranny. Years passed, and the prophet of God Abraham grew up, and God revealed to him prophecy and the message, calling people to believe in God and his oneness without any partners. Abraham began calling people to worship God alone until everyone in the city knew about him, but no one believed in him. However, the first appearance of faith and calling against Nimrod was when people went out one day in a great display to get food, as Nimrod owned all the wheat and food in the country. People would go out and choose food from him to eat. Prophet Abraham went out with them once to choose food like the people. Nimrod would pass by the people and ask, Who is your Lord? They would say, You are our master, our Lord, Lord and, and our God. God. Until once he passed by Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. And Nimrod, who had heard of him, said, What is this sedition you are stirring in the country and among the people, O Abraham? Do you see that you have a God other than me and a Lord worthy of worship besides me? Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, said to him, My Lord is God who gives life and causes death. Nimrod was astonished by Prophet Abraham's response and said, I give life and cause death. I kill whoever I want and spare whoever I want. So bring back to life the one I do not kill. Then Nimrod ordered two men who had been sentenced to death, release the first and kill the second. Prophet Abraham said, if you are truly honest, then bring back to life the one you killed. Nimrod was silent for a moment, then asked Prophet Abraham, What else does your Lord do? Prophet Abraham, with his wisdom, changed his argument and said, God brings the sun from the east, so bring it from the west. Here Nimrod felt intense incapacity and astonishment, silenced by the wisdom God Almighty had given to Prophet Abraham. This conversation between Nimrod and our Prophet Abraham was in front of a crowd of people. Nimrod did not want to kill Abraham at that time, not to appear weak in front of the people. Nimrod turned Prophet Abraham away from the food and did not give him anything. Prophet Abraham returned and passed by a sand dune and said, Should I not take from this sand and bring it to my family so they may find comfort when I enter upon them? Prophet Abraham took some of the sand and went to his family, placed his belongings, then entered and slept. His wife woke up to find in Prophet Abraham's belongings the best types of food. She prepared a delicious meal for him and presented it to him. When the food was brought, he asked her, Where is this from? She said, From the food you brought. Prophet Abraham knew in himself that God had provided for him, so he praised and thanked God. Then Prophet Abraham went to his people, calling them to worship God alone, without any partners, and to abandon the worship of Nimrod, idols, planets, the sun, and stars. But no one from his people listened. One day, while the people of Abraham were celebrating outside the city, Prophet Abraham decided to plot against them. He went to their idols and broke them all except for the largest one, said to be named Marduk. They said, Who has who done, has done, done this, this to our, to our gods? gods? They said, We heard a young man mention them who is called Abraham. They said, Then bring him here to testify. They said, have you done this to our gods, O Abraham? He said, The eldest among them did this, so ask him. Thus they came questioning. And how can an idol which harms not nor benefits do what you claim? They took him to Nimrod so that he might face punishment. There Nimrod saw an opportunity to take revenge on our master Abraham, peace be upon him, for what he had done to them before. Nimrod ordered a large and abundant amount of wood to be gathered, and a great pit to be dug and set it ablaze, Indeed, it was as Nimrod wished. It became the greatest fire ever made in the entire city. They threw our master Abraham into the fire, letting it consume him for several days to collect his ashes, as he was the first to dare against their mute gods. After many days and rounds of fire, they found that our master Abraham, peace be upon him, remained unharmed by the fire, except that it had consumed his chains. Nimrod furious, saw that the people began to believe in the Lord of Abraham, 
and to believe and trust in what he brought. Finding no other way, Nimrod sought help from Satan, whom God has cursed. Satan informed him that Abraham was but a devil among devils, which is why the fire did not harm him. Satan did not tell him that he was a prophet of God, sent with truth from God Almighty. With the same arrogance and pride, Nimrod asked, What does Abraham possess that I do not? Satan replied, saying, He possesses nothing but cunning. Thus he declared his great rebellion against Satan, who was to him his only ally. God sent an angel from the heavens to Nimrod, inviting him to worship God alone without any partners, and he would remain in his kingdom. Nimrod, arrogant and tyrannical without right, responded to this angel sent by God according to the story, Is there anyone here but me? His heart filled with pride and tyranny, he became incapable of seeing the truth from falsehood. Nimrod rejected what the angel brought him, so God sent another angel, whom he also refused. Then God sent a third angel, which he refused as well. Nimrod told him, Gather your troops and I will gather mine within three days. Nimrod gathered his assembly in three days, and when the meeting took place, God sent upon them armies of mosquitoes that ate their flesh and drank their blood, leaving his army as skeletons around him. Only Nimrod was left, upon whom God inflicted a mosquito that entered his nose and settled in his brain. Nimrod found relief only when beaten with iron hammers and shoes. He begged his servants to hit him on the head to ease the pain, even slightly. It is said that Nimrod suffered from this mosquito for 400 years, the same duration of his tyrannical rule, pride and exaltation over the people. God Almighty punished him with a tiny mosquito, which became the cause of his demise. It is also said that Nimrod died in madness due to the excessive beating he endured. This is the end of every unjust tyrant. The tale of Nimrod embodies the universal lesson that the arrogance of power and defiance against divine truth leads to downfall. It illustrates that true strength lies not in temporal power or tyranny, but in humility before God's will and the enduring virtues of faith and righteousness. This story, spanning from Abraham's miraculous survival to Nimrod's tragic end, serves as a timeless reminder that justice prevails and that divine retribution, though sometimes delayed, is inevitable for those who oppress and lead astray.